Okay, good evening. So, today we're going to talk about solar panels. Um, we're going to talk about the fact that I've had them installed. Um, and the simple question is, to have or not to have? So, uh, let's get to it. Okay, so I had the system installed in May, May the 20th to be exact, um, for a company called Contact Solar. The original setup that was going to be put in was going to be 18 solar panels and 5 kilowatt hour battery. So a 5 kilowatt hour battery is exactly that. It's a battery that will hold 5 kilowatts of power. So, if you use one kilowatt an hour, then it lasts five hours. If you lose 500 watts, you get 10 hours. So, basically, that's how it works. Um, so, I had that installed in May. So, through, G through June, as we know, we had a fantastic summer. Um, and that went into July. Um, so, we were generating some pretty substantial power. What was happening though was because me and Teresa work um, shift, um, so there's virtually nobody here in the day or we're asleep in the day, all of the power that was being generated by the solar panels that we weren't using was going back to the grid. Because once the battery was filled and there was nowhere else for it to go, it went back to the grid. The grid asked for us to have a smart meter fitted which we did and if you look at the one of the videos earlier you'll see why I had the smart meter ripped back out now obviously they have something called the smart energy guarantee basically what that is is you send your power back to the grid by your smart meter it then sets you up a tariff that then they pay you back for the power that you upload back to the grid. Quite simple, okay? Except for there's a catch. So, for every kilowatt that you send back to the grid, they'll pay you three pence a kilowatt. Yeah. And then every kilowatt that you take from the grid, they charge you between 31 and 39 pence a kilowatt. Now, bear in mind, this was before the price rise. So, obviously I had mine fixed prior to the price rise. So, obviously I had it fixed in at, um, th I had it reduced down to 31 pence a kilowatt, give or take a little bit. But obviously the standard charge is higher than that. Um, so, I think it's something sitting something in the regions of around 39 pence a kilowatt now, something like that. And then obviously now October, it's gone up again. Obviously, I don't know how much that is, but again, because I'm fixed in, I'm locked in safely at the moment, shall we say, but I'm not on my gas. So I'm going to get hammered on my gas, quite plain and simple, but it is what it is, the same as everybody else. Um, so when I was looking at the data and finding out that I was shipping a substantial amount of stuff back to the grid, excuse me, let's get rid of that lot in the background. That's better. I'll we'll just have it as a halo at the back of my head. Um, so when we realised how much we were sending back to the grid, um, I decided to have another battery installed. If any more in the original system cost me nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine quid, ten grand, and that was eighteen solar panels, which gave me seven point two five kilowatts of of solar generation. It never went to 7.25. In fact, the most it actually went up to was probably about five. So, not everything is it seems. If you know what they say and what it is, sometimes are two completely different things. Now, bear in mind, if I was living um, down south um, and I had a north uh, south facing roof with sunshine all day every day, yes, I probably would get exactly what it says on the tin. Okay, 
The bungalow is uh, east facing, so we get sun in the morning up to around two o'clock and then it goes over the top of the bungalow and then obviously it goes on the back. Because of the amount of trees that we got in the back, there was no point having solar panels on the back. So I only get, realistically, I only get about 42 to 47% of solar generation per day. So you need to take that into account when we go through the rest of this data, because in theory, you guys should be better than me, because I can only generate half of what everybody else generates, okay? Plus it's a bungalow, which means it's lower down as well. So obviously, because of the trees, I absolutely can't get anything off on the roof on an afternoon. So, sorry I'm digressing. So, um, I had, I decided then to have another battery installed. Now, the battery cost me 2,999 quid. So, total package, everything was 13,000 pound. Now, yes, 3,000 pound was a lot of money for a battery. It was, whichever way you look at it. Um, the reason why I did that is because I wanted to offset. So bearing in mind, I was sending back in June and July, I was sending in the regions of 1,000 kilowatts back to the grid for free, for nothing, <laughs> for nothing. Because obviously once the batteries were fully charged up, then obviously, and there was no power being used apart from the pumps in the ponds and everything else. Once everything was full and you couldn't use it, it went back to the grid and there was nothing I could do about it. So what I decided was, I ain't going to accept this three pence a kilowatt. I ain't going to have a solar a smart meter fitted. We all know why I've already had that discussion. So I decided to have an additional battery fitted. Now, again, it has its, its positives and its negatives, like everything. Obviously, it's £3,000. Okay. But the... Negative is, like any other system, unless they're piggybacked against each other. So unless you've got a decent company that comes and stores in these, stores in, installs your power, if they don't piggyback the batteries and do what they call balancing, what will happen then is the batteries will develop a memory. So if they're not balanced, so what, I'm, what I mean by balanced is now, in theory, by balancing them, I have actually got one battery that does 10 kilowatts. That's basically the easiest way to explain it. If they piggyback it, you've got two five kilowatt batteries. So it fills the one up, then it fills the other one up. And then once they're both full, empties the one, empties the other one, fills the up, fills the one, and that's how it does it. This is what happens if you get the cowboy in. The downside to that is the batteries will develop a memory. It may not happen this year, but potentially could happen in year three, four or five. So what would happen, like any battery um, in today's technology, they develop memories. So we'll say for argument's sake that in its cycling process, it's only using constantly 70%, that battery will only charge up to 70%. It will never charge up to 100 because it's now developed a memory. To get away from that memory, they have to discharge them, reset it, charge them back up again. That's the only way they can do it. So don't get yourself a cowboy in to install solar panels. That's the priority. Okay? Now, is it worth it? <laughs> the best way for me to turn around and say, is it worth it, is yes. If you have £13,000 that you have spare, you're not going to use it for anything else and you need to invest for the future, then absolutely 100%. If you take these out on a loan or you take them out on finance or you buy the money from the bank, they will charge you interest. That interest will probably be in the regions between 6.2 and whatever else they're going to charge. You will lose that 6% based on the savings that you make from the solar panels that you have generated. Quite plain and simple. So, yes, definitely worth having. No shadow of a doubt. If you're paying cash flow. If you're not paying for cash flow, don't bother. Stick, stick with what you've got. I know it's hard, 
But trust me, all you'll be doing is giving the money back to the interest company, giving money back to the companies. Now, I can't show you the actual saving that I've got because it's on the phone, and the phone is what I'm using. However, what I can do, I can show you what I've generated, and then what I can do then is show you what I've done in the last 12 months. That'll be the, sorry, in the last six months. So, bearing in mind, currently, October's is not on here at the moment. It will be on here, um, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but that predicting is to be around 222 kilowatts of power used that I've actually used from the grid. Now, people are going to ask the, same, the question, how come you're still using power from the grid? Simple answer is, anybody that turns around and says to you that these solar panels, based on these systems, will allow you to be off-grid a lawyer's. Plain and simple, okay? Unless you live in Kent and you've got a safe-facing roof all day, every day, and you have absolute sun for 12 months of the year, then possibly you'll be off the grid. Not with the 10 kilowatt battery you won't. You're going to be looking at between 20 and 25 kilowatts of power. Right, so why do I keep talking about these batteries? So, if you look at it realistically, sun rises in the summer around 4 o'clock in the morning. It starts going at about your 20% rise, so where, you, where your solar panels are starting to kick in, they're waking up and then they're starting to work. That normally comes in at about 7 o'clock, okay? On my roof, obviously, it will go through to about 3 o'clock. I will still generate power, but obviously I'll be generating less and less and less the further the day goes in. So, we'll say for argument's sake, I use, I don't know, 15 kilowatts in a day, okay? And I generate 30 kilowatts in a day. Some of that power will have gone to the battery. Some of that power will have gone to be used for dishwasher, tumble dryer, the usual stuff. The rest of it will have gone to the grid because there's nothing I can do about it, right? But then I've got 10 kilowatts of power. Now, bear in mind, we're all still using pumps and we're using air stones and we're using bits and pieces on the ponds and obviously we're putting the kettle on at night. Bear in mind as well, here's an interesting one for you. If you buy uh, one of these kettles from, I don't know, um, Asda, the fire up for it is four kilowatts. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'll, I'll show you that in a couple of bits, in a, a few bits and pieces in a minute. I can literally show you what time the kettle's going on for trees to go to work and for me to go to work. I'll literally show you because it'll spike. And that's when the kettle's going on and then it's spiked down again when obviously when it's been switched off. Okay? Now bear in mind, the average kettle warms up in five minutes. Okay? But that's not the point. The point is how much of that spike it uses straight away because it actually shocks the system. So taking into account the 10 kilowatt of battery power that I use, so it starts to kick in, the battery starts to get used around the three o'clock mark, four o'clock mark, give or take a little bit. And obviously, the further into the seasons you go, the earlier it gets to use the batteries. Now bear in mind, you get back at six o'clock or you get back at eight o'clock, stick the oven on, um, have yourself something to eat, put the hob on, throw yourself some bacon or whatever it is that you're going to do for your, for your tea or throw your microwave up, put the microwave up, whatever. There's a spike in power and that spike in power is what uses your battery up, okay? So what I normally get is about four hours of battery. Yeah, so I'll get four hours roughly of free power. But anyone, I've got all the pond stuff going on. Um, plus we've got all our day-to-day -day stuff when we get back. There's nothing I can do about it. We both get back after the sun's gone down, if you like. So I ain't really other I can do about it. Plus, bear in mind, my roof, I only use half the power because the sun's east and west, okay? So when you, when you start looking at it, yes, the solar panels are worth having, okay? So I can show you a couple of statements. So, 
of these now. So if we look at um, June to Ju June to Ju July, and on there, if you can see it, I used 117 quid worth of power. Bear in mind, I was overdrawn. I was overdrawn because in May uh, or beginning of May, I was using 825 kilowatts. So obviously, it was smashing the power up. Um, and then the price went up again in August, didn't it, if you remember? So, mine then was 300 quid overdrawn. So, I was paying around £179 a month, give or take a little bit. So, what actually started to happen was I was actually using less and less from the grid. When I was using 825 kilowatts from the grid, um, in June I was using 310, in July I was using 207, in August I was using 140, and in September I was using 198. I'll just flip you around so you can see. What so if you look up there, look, you can see here, look. So this was the generation of the power and this is how much I use. So red is more than I should have done and green is what I should, where I am now. And obviously you can see, so you can see, look, smart meter was, rem was removed in the May. You can see that I was averaging four, so bearing in mind in May, I was averaging 24.1 kilowatts of power per day I was using. And that was without any solar panels at all. So, and as you can see there, so solar panels installed on the 20th of the 5th, 2022. So, when you start looking here, look, so the 24th, the 5th, smart meter was ripped out, because obviously you, 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 I had that issue with the smart meter. In May, so the back part of the May, from the 20th up and including the end of the month, it was 4.42 kilowatts that I actually used. But then when you've got your full month that was in June, I actually used 10 kilowatts. So I actually used less than half from the grid, as you can see. So I used 310. And then we had a fantastic summer. But bearing in mind, I was also looking here that I was still using a substantial amount of power from the grid. So I had my second battery installed on the 15th of July. Once I had that done on the 31st then, I was down to 6.7 kilowatts of usage um, a month. Uh, sorry, 6.7 kilowatts a day, which was a total of 207 kilowatts used. That's the meter reading from that, and then that's the meter reading from that one, and basically that calculation is that minus that gives you that one. And these are gas, obviously. So then in August, I actually come down to 4.52, so I only used 140 kilowatts. Now, obviously, in September, we got a little bit more or less light. So as you can see, pretty obviously, here. So 30th of September, I was up to 190. And I'm actually expecting in for it to come up to 200 and... I'm expecting it to come up to 220, 225, something like that. And then December, January, February... You're going, to, you're going to be using the 300 because you're using hardly, you're getting hardly any sun if you think about it. Um, so my total saving right here, right now, so that's money that I've actually saved in total. So if I kind of go back to the, um, I go back to the generator up here, look. So as you can see, I'll come up to, just bear me a sec, come on to here. Obviously, this is tonight now, so this is a little bit. I wish this would stop coming on. So, if I click onto that link there, this will show you the usage for grid, which obviously goes through at night. And there's that spike I was telling you about there, look. See, so that's when the kettle goes on, right there. So, quite plain and simple. And obviously, here's where the oven's gone on, stuff like that. So, if we go back to the day before and the day before that, and again, two spikes, look. These two spikes are when I went to work and when Teresa went to work. And again, come back again. And there's the spikes again, look. So five o'clock in the morning, 
that's when the spike went on, when Teresa put the kettle on. Obviously, I got up at 8 o'clock because I was on afternoons that week. And then, obviously, when I come back on the evening, this is the oven and this is the microwave. So, the bits and pieces on that one. So, it just shows you that. So, if I then go to um, equipment, and then I'll go to... Um, sorry, come out of that. Go back to overview. So, if I come back down here, and I'll look at month, uh, yearly... So yearly will show you, so as you can see, May, June, July, August, September and October. And as you can see, the green is you where you're using solar. So as you can see, they start to come down, they start to come down. Red is the actual load. So that's how much you actually use power-wise. And then you've got the export and import. Import is what you send to the, is what you take from the grid. Um, and export is what you send back to the grid. So in bear in mind that was sorry about that. So bear in mind that was when I was um, we got my batteries changed. So if you look at this one at the moment, so I'm looking at uh, 200, 260. This one I'm looking at 220, and this one I'm looking at 146. Now, obviously, these are not 100% accurate, but they're as close as we're going to get. So when you look at the totals, so the total that I've actually generated is 2,963 kilowatts. So it's 2,963.8, but we'll just call it 2,960. So we'll get a calculator. So 2,960, and we times that by uh, 0.33, so we'll use that as average at 33, okay? 976 pounds and 80 pence I've saved. That's not including the VAT and everything else, and that's based in May. So obviously this one is the amount of power that I've used, so it's 3,233. So if you divide that one by that one, that tells you what the massive saving is. Um, I've imported a total of 1,212, and I've exported 727. And these two here are my batteries. So taking all that into account, I know that was quite a bit of information, for that I do apologise. Um, and there's a lot of data in there. Uh, to be fair, I'm trying to rush this off to, to give you the, the best and quickest information I possibly can. So, system I've had installed is 7.25 kilowatts with 10 kilowatt hour batteries. They are two batteries in total. They are substantially heavy. They weigh 52 kilos each. So, obviously, the blokes that come down to put them in the loft need to be quite burly, quite honestly. Uh, and they were. So, yeah. so in to summarise this in the best way that I possibly can, do I recommend solar panels? Yes, I do, 100%. The conditions to it are you have to buy cash for them. If you have them on finance and you do decide to have it through the solar company finance, God forbid, you're talking at eight, between 8 and 10% APR because they use some of the um, companies like Black Horse Ford Finance and a few others. I can't remember the names of them anyway, but I know their insurance policies on their, I, their sorry, their APRs are quite high. Um, so, yes, I would recommend them if you pay cash for them. Um, there have been five people that have literally come around the house, said what they like. I've given them exactly the same information that I'm giving you now on this YouTube channel. Um, they bought them. Obviously, they got they got the spare cash. Now, I went with um, Contact Solar. They aren't the cheapest out there, okay? But they have an app. They have twenty four seven customer support. Um, they are tech support on a regular basis um, and quite literally they'll phone me and turn around and say Glenn 
Um, just looking at your data, you, you appear to have a couple of spikes here. Uh, can you tell me what these are? And that's where the conversation was around the kettles and stuff like that. Um, they recommended changing uh, a couple of things in the house, which uh, I couldn't do, to be fair. So one they was asking to, for me to do was to change the chest freezer, which was in the garage. Um, yeah, it's 15 years old. Yeah, it uses a lot of power. But it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, I can put half a cow in there, quite plain and simple. Um, and when I start going into my cooking sprays, trust me, I need to have as much space in there as I can. Um, so, yeah, so from that kind of point of view, you know, they've been really, really good. And I would recommend them. There are cheaper companies out there. There are also cowboys out there. And when I say cowboys, I mean cowboys. And when I've just discussed to you previously, about piggybacking the batteries and not balancing them. That's one of the examples. Um, another one was that there was a gentleman that was down the road, um, asked me about solar panels. I had installed on mine, so I'm talking through everything, pretty much the same as what I'm doing with yourselves now. He decided to go with uh, another company. I'll be honest with you, they looked rough on the, they did look really rough on the roof. Um, I told him not to have the pure black ones. Just to give you a quick summary on this one, so there's two types of solar panel. There's a jet black one, and there is a black with silver strips in it. Okay, it's basically the. It used to be the difference was one was daylight, one was sunlight. That was in the old days, and I'm talking about eight years ago now. Now. Now, as technology has moved on and, and done all the, all the different things, all solar panels do day, work on daylight. Um, solar panels in sunlight are better than obviously in daylight. The downside to the pure black solar panels is when they get hot, they generate less power or they are less efficient, shall I say, which I didn't know. I was very, very interested to find that out. So there are Mitsubishi, Samsung, um, Bosch have got theirs out there. There's numerous other companies out there as well that have got their own types of solar panels. A lot of these are the black ones. So when you ask the question about solar panels, just say to them, can you show me what type of solar panel it is? Um, and they make your judgment based on that. Also, the black panels are about 20% cheaper. So, yes, they'll say to you, yes, it's going to be, bear in mind, I'm talking about cowboys now. They'll turn around and say, yeah, these are more efficient, these are better, these are the best things, these sliced bread. And they'll charge you the same price they would do with the more efficient solar panels, but they'll be these other ones. So, just be careful with that. Also, when you have the solar panels installed, if you have the solar panels installed, Always make sure that when they install them, the gap between the solar panel and the roof tiles are at the bare minimum. Now, the reason why. We all know that birds like to nest. We all know any crevice that they can find, they will nest under it. That's why you have as low as you possibly can between your roof and your solar panels, you need to have as, as minimum, minimum gap as possible. I think the current standard is 12 mil, I think it is. Now, bear in mind, these ones that I saw down the road, a pigeon could get underneath it. So if you can imagine a pigeon getting underneath and you know what they're like when they come to nesting and the amount of mess that they make, you've then got to get somebody in there to try and get them cleaned out. And that's going to cost you some money. So just think about little tiny silly things like that as you're going down the ladder. So to summarise, yes, I've had these solar panels fitted. I did say I was going to have them done. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of my solar panels now. Right, so as you can see, solar panels have been installed. I know that it looks like it's slightly out there. And the simple reason is because of the bungalow, the way the bungalow is, that's obviously the front room. That's the hallway, and obviously that's a bedroom. So obviously it's offset. 
So I know it looks a bit weird, but trust me, there's 18 solar panels on there. Um, so obviously they're west facing. Oops, um, uh, obviously what I'll do is I'll get the sun in the day um, towards about two o'clock it'll go, obviously go over the back. The reason why I've had them on this side, obviously we've got a lot of trees in the background. So, um, and just to show you that obviously <laughs> I've started a trend. So I've started a trend as you can see. So obviously they've got them now. Um, and I believe in the next couple of weeks uh, be a few others having them done as well. Okay, so you've you've seen those, and obviously you've seen the ones over the road that had these installed literally three weeks after I had mine installed. Um, they did offer to me to give me um, for um, assigning somebody else. They gave me hundred quid. So what I did was. I gave them the 100 quid and said, there you go, there's a nice little bonus for you as well. Because uh, at the end of the day, I, I made it very clear to everybody, um, I'm not in it for the sponsorship. I'm just in it. Can I get this done? Does it do exactly what it says on the tin? Does it make a saving? How much does it cost you? Is it going to benefit you? And that's exactly what I'm doing here now at this one. So I know there's a lot of gobbledygook in here, in this. And if anybody wants any more precise information, rather than me going round and round in circles um, and doing this on the spur of the moment. I'm trying to get this out as quickly as I can. The simple reason is the next video that's going to be coming out now is going to be the greenhouse stroke koi house at the top of the garden. So I wanted to get this solar panel stuff out um, and I wanted to give that level of data. So today is the 29th of October, so it's Saturday. Um, I am going to do a metre reading tomorrow um, and then obviously I'm going to submit that then to my best friend, Eon. Or not as the case may be. But anyway, I've got no choice at the moment. So I'll be submitting that at the end of the month to them. Um, then obviously I'm having the greenhouse, koi house built at the top of the garden. So that will be the next video coming up. So, I know it's gone on a little bit. Um, I hope I've given you enough information to give it uh, at least a structure of whether it's worth having or not. And definitely, 100%. If you're paying cash, absolutely. Today, tomorrow, and three times on a Sunday. If you're going to have it done finance, you ain't going to benefit. Yes, you will, but it's very, very small. So if you think about it realistically, right, I've saved £1,000 so far since May, and we're six months in. I think what I'll actually save realistically over the course of the year will probably be between twelve and £1,300. Okay? So £1,300, still going to take me 10 years to pay it back off. Simple as that, isn't it? So, yes, it's going to save me some money. Yes, the electric's going to go up. It's, a, it's the nature of the beast, okay? Um, would I do it again? Absolutely. So, on that, I'll leave that one as it is. Again, sorry if it's been boring, but um hope this has given you a bit of an insight into solar panels. So... Be safe, have a good one, I'll see you soon.